Today we're looking at three different ways to make projects that are larger than your media size. Good news is, is that there is no wrong way. You pick which one feels right for your brain and run with it. Hi, I'm Brenda Lambert. I'm a TJC licensed instructor for Silhouette. You found your way to Silhouette Success and I do hope that you're going to join our little community. There is a lot of information in this video today, so let's jump right in. Let's start off by making our mat smaller because we want our project to be larger than the mat. I'm going to draw out a star from the flexi shape panel, convert that to path, and fill it with color so we can see it better. Now typically when we are working with a 12 by 12 piece of media, we can cut out something that is just slightly smaller so that it stays within the cut border. However, if we need something that is larger than our mat or larger than our media, we can slice this up in a few different ways and then piece it back together for the final project. We are eventually going to take a look at the media layout setup panel, but that's only available in the business edition. So I wanted to take a look at a couple of different ways you can get this done without the business edition. The first option is using your knife tool. And I have to warn you that this is not the most accurate. The knife tool does actually cut just a little bit of your design away, but for most projects, it will work fine. So let's select our knife tool. We can position it just inside of the cut border, hold down our shift key and drag that out. Now, if you do not have auto apply checked in your preferences, you can come up here and click apply. And that has sliced our star into two pieces. Let's put that right back for now. Select our knife tool again. We're going to do the same thing for the bottom. Hold down your shift key, drag that out, and click apply. Now we have our star cut into four different pieces, and we can arrange them on the mat. And you can go ahead and put more than one piece on at a time. Just turn this a bit, and that'll fit right in there. And you can cut this out on two pieces of cardstock. The second way to get this done is a little bit more accurate, but also takes a little bit more time. We're starting off with the same star. We want to select that and we will need four copies in total. So let's duplicate this three times. Select all of those and center and get them set up on the page properly. The next thing you'll want to do is grab a rectangle from your drawing tools get situated so that it's going to draw out just slightly smaller than the cut border. Hold down your shift key and drag that out. With that square still selected, we can open up our replicate panel, go ahead and duplicate to the right, duplicate below and duplicate to the left. That has created four different squares. They are all touching and lined up perfectly. So now we have four stars and four squares. We can select one of the squares, hold down our shift key, select one of the stars, open up the modify panel and select crop. And we're going to go ahead and do that with each of the squares and stars. Now we have sliced our star into four pieces once again. And once they are cut out, you will be able to line them up and complete your project. Now we are ready to open up the media layout setup panel. The first thing you want to do is check show media layout split screen. This shows your design area on one side and your cutting mat on the other. You want to start off with the right size media. I'm going to leave mine at a 12 by 12. The tiling tab is the fourth one. So let's click on that and check tiling active. That has automatically split our design up into four pieces on four different mats. And we could cut this out just like this. This is going to waste a lot of material if you cut it out like this. So we can head over to the nesting tab 
click on nesting active and adjust our grid so that all of the pieces will fit on the mat. You can play around with this until you get all of the pieces set up on two pieces of paper like we had it before. It just takes a little bit of trial and error. So now with the nesting active and the tiling active, we've gotten pretty much the same result as we did using the knife tool or the crop tool. There are a lot of different options here. I cannot get relative to media to work properly for me for some reason, but the user defined works well. That's what we're looking at now. When it's in user defined, you can adjust these tiles either by using the red nodes or adjusting the X and Y axis, the width, the height, and all of that stuff. Now, if you have maintain aspect checked, it's going to adjust the height and the width proportionately. You can uncheck that and move them around independently. You can also create a margin here, and that will create a distance in between your cuts. And the show dimensions option just means that you have the dimensions of your tiles displayed here along the edges. Now, when you go to the send panel, both of these are going to be sent to cut. If you have selected tiles only, you can click on that and select tile number one. Then the first tile will be cut. And you can see here only the number one tile was highlighted. You can select the tiles here or just by clicking on them over here. When you send all of the mats to cut, it's going to send one through, finish that job up, then pause the machine so you can unload it and reload it with the next mat. After you have your machine reloaded, you just need to hit the resume button and it will go on to the next one. Putting your pieces back together is much easier if you go back to the design screen so you can see the shape of each tile and place them where they should be. My brain was not in the mood for puzzling this morning, apparently. You can see here that all of the edges line up perfectly. This cut was made from the tiling feature in Silhouette Studio using the Business Edition. All of the other features that we talked about today will work just as well. If you have stuck around this far, go ahead and give me a thumbs up on the video. I really appreciate the interaction. Go create something amazing and I'll see you in the next video.